You know, um, I did. I, I worked really closely with Chad Moeller and other folks, folks at folks at Mizzou and folks at uh, the University of Toledo, to be able to, you know, kind of understand the the process, right? The nominating process, the deliberation process, and stuff. And so, um, we had an opportunity to kind of kind of know how that was coming along. But in particular, Chad Moeller was amazing at organizing all that. But yeah, so I was pretty. I'm pretty in tune with what was going on with the process. But when I received the call, when I learned about it, for sure, I got a call from Gary. You know, Gary's the guy that called me and said, hey, this is, he was pretty emotional, and I was pretty emotional when he called me, so. I was going to ask, what was your reaction, and what were the, the thoughts that went through your head when you heard it happen? Well, first I got emotional. You know, I, I think that, uh, you know, Gary and I have worked together a long time, and we've known each other, and I think we have a lot of mutual respect for each other, and friendship and love for each other and, and so to be able to to get that call from him and to hear him on the other end and his emotional side and mine as well too it was pretty special because I think it's a culmination of so many different people and so many different student athletes and so many you know folks throughout the entire university and the Tiger Scholarship Fund and people around the state that, that really made all that come come together but to be able to see that type of recognition for a guy with that type of character and certainly that type of legacy, um, and to be able to see that recognized in such a way is pretty, pretty special. In your opinion, why is Gary Pinkle a Hall of Famer? I think because of the total package. This goes beyond the wins and losses, and certainly there's no question the wins and losses speak for themselves. The winningest coach in the history of Toledo, the winningest coach in the history of the University of Missouri, the championships, all of that. But it's beyond that. I think the way that, that he uh, developed a program that focused on what we were doing academically with our kids, how they were growing as, as young people, and certainly then as they matriculated beyond Mizzou, um, the structure of the program, doing it with integrity, always, always within uh, the rules of what we, were, what we should be doing, um, and certainly living a, a, a value-based decision-making. I think all that kind of stuff together, Ben, really translates into a lot of wins. But I think that if you take a look only at the, lot of the, the, all the wins, you're missing the picture of what built all that, and that's why he deserves to be a Hall of Famer. Why, why did you hire him? What, what stuck out about Gary Pinkle that, that made you want to bring him in? You know, when we met with, with Coach, uh, certainly we were tracking that and, you know, the infamous lists that all athletic directors are supposed to have. You know, we, we, we had that and maintained those types of things. But, Andrew, as we, as we looked at that and we went to Toledo, so what we did is we flew to Toledo to meet with him in person and we met with him at a courtyard by Marriott mm -hmm. in Toledo the day after his final game uh, at the University of Toledo. So, you know, he gets home at 1 or 2 o'clock in the morning and we're meeting with him at 7.30 a.m. at the Courtyard Bar Marriott. And so when he comes into the, to the hotel room, you know, kind of a semi-suite kind of room that we had with just a couple of folks in there, uh, then um, his, just his focus and his intensity and his organization and the way that he was able to express a, a, a kind of a humble confidence and, and his ability to be able to characterize what he expected to do to be able to build a program. I think those types of things were impressive. But to do that, literally, at 7 o'clock in the morning, on three hours of sleep, coming off of a big win that he had the night before, and a bunch of snow and rain and all that other stuff, it's pretty impressive to see a guy respond like that. When you, when you hired him, um, yes. did you ever think you would have the impact that he do it on the entire state? Uh, I don't know if you could envision that. You know, initially, I think that was a hoped-for uh, type of deal. But I remember in talking with um, the, the chancellor at that time, uh, who's a gentleman named Richard Wallace, an amazing guy, and uh, the guy that hired me at Mizzou. I remember talking to him and some of our board members that said, we have to remember this when we hire Coach, Coach Pinkle. Uh, the reason Mizzou is where Mizzou is at today is because of what Mizzou has always done. And that is every time they got a little bit nervous about different types of things, they made a change. They made a change with football coaches. They made a change with athletic directors. And we have to understand that going into this, we have to be committed to doing this methodically and in the right way, and it's going to take some time. And so doing that, I think we could not have envisioned, I don't think at that time, the, the tremendous amount of success that he was going to, going to have. We had a hope for of that, and we had an understanding of what it was going to take, we thought, to be able to develop that. But it was important, I think, initially to be able to have that mindset. The reason why Mizzou is where Mizzou is at today is because of what Mizzou has always done. 
And that's reactionary and making decisions and turning coaches and turning ADs. And, and so I think as we, we, we started that as the foundation and building upon that, it allowed us to be able to continually draw back on those types of discussions that we had early on. And it helped us to be able to build that program. Yeah, when, did you, when did you realize that you flipped the program for good away from that perception you just mentioned? You know, I think that I, I, I really think the 2003 season was a was a was a touch point um, because we could touch that and we could see it. Right. We make it to a bowl game. We start seeing this thing come forward. And I think the majority of people thought that that would just be on a continual trajectory. But it was almost like a stock. Right. The stock was slowly growing. And then all of a sudden there was a market correction. Well, the market correction was the his fourth year. And then people are going, wait a minute here. But it was the stability. It was just like a corporate company. There was a stability in the foundation that was going to, we hoped, be able to be able to, um, to withstand the market correction. And when that happened, it started to turn back up. But I really think a tipping point on that, seriously, was the, probably the 2003 uh, season. And then knowing that there was a correction in 2004 and there was such a st solid foundation that was going to build from there. In there, Gary, deflected a lot. It's not just about me. There's so many people that touch our yeah. kids. But as a head good football program, you're in. You're it's at the helm. You're in charge of everything. So to know that he's still thinking other people, can you brag on him a little bit and say why that's so important? Just that kind of leadership. Because he's a uh, he's a consummate servant leader. Because he absolutely recognizes that you have to flip you have to flip the pyramid, right? So most people see the head coach up here, right? And so if you can flip the pyramid and have the head coach down here feeding into all of these other things, I think that's truly a transformational leader. And so when Gary deflects like that or talks like that, that isn't just verbiage. That's who he is, right? And he is literally a servant leader to, to the core. And he has that ability, and he had that ability to take that pyramid at Mizzou and to flip it upside down. Now, by flipping it upside down, though, Eric, it also doesn't mean, though, that you're just kind of casting it away and letting folks kind of do what they... There still has to be somebody that's going to ultimately make the decision. And he was always that guy. But doing that in a way that he could try to connect that with all these components of a program. He was a terrific CEO. And, and as I said, um, he was a, a person that was a selfless and a servant leader. But did you ever have any doubts when he went into the SEC the football team wouldn't be able to, to keep up with the Alabamas and Georgias and then when he saw it come to fruition yeah. was it surprising or expected? Uh, no, I mean sure we had some <laughs> doubts. I mean you could step into the SEC, I mean that's a that's a whole different level. That's a whole different animal and that's not to take anything away from the Big 12. The Big 12 is a terrific league but the SEC is just a, it's a different animal um, because beyond football I mean, it's across the board. Everything is, is constant on a regular basis. And so we certainly didn't necessarily have doubts, but we certainly had some, our, our antennas were really raised about what are we going to need to do to be able to compete week in and week out against the best in, in the country. And we knew that, that what that was going to take was it was going to take a constant, ongoing commitment to every single day analyzing what we needed to do to become better. And so whether it had to do with the football program or whether it had to do with how we ran our football games or whether it had to do with what we were trying to do in raising dollars for the program or how we trying to reconnect with what we were trying to do with our faculty efforts on campus, whatever that may be, we had to constantly evaluate that every single day and be committed to make those adjustments. And so that's a long answer to say, was there, uh, were, did we think that we were going to have some challenges? No question, right? Did we foresee that we were going to turn around and after one year be able to go back to back SEC East champions? No, we didn't, we didn't foresee that. But certainly I think it comes back to that solid foundation piece that we always would come back to. This is the core of who we are. We're always going to continue to draw on that and we're going to build on that going forward. The issue with the SEC, you just got to do it in, in um, hyper speed. Right, it's a little different pace in the SEC than it is in other leagues. How, how special is it that that is what's been recognized in, in Gary Tinkle going into the Hall of Fame? It's not necessarily about a stack of championships. It's about that foundation, the way you ran the program every day. Yeah, I think that's certainly, I, I would hope that all those decisions are made and you would see that based upon everyone that's, that's been inducted in the Hall of Fame. But we realize that's not necessarily always the case. 
But I think in this particular case, I think it is of tremendous value to the, the, the hall, but I think it's a tremendous value to the University of Missouri, and I think it's a tremendous value to the state of Missouri. And it's certainly an absolute, uh, should, should have a sense of pride as Missourians that those kind of characteristics, those kind of values that he's being inducted for beyond the wins and losses are certainly the reasons why, because I think it's reflective of our state. And you mentioned kind of, you know, that foundation just, you know, when you had kind of that first year in the SEC that didn't really go the way you guys wanted or, you know, other times it didn't just, what about him as a coach and as a person kind of made you guys able to weather the storm, you know, in addition to just having that foundation of kind of how he went about that, things? That's a great, a great question. I think that now you're, now you're talking about 11 to 12 years of relationship, right, of working together and understanding how each – it's not just Gary and I, it's all of us, kind of how we tick and how we operate and what we respond to and what our challenges are. So I think that over the course of that time, we developed a, a certain uh, uh, inter intersection with everyone about how we operated, knowing that if in fact we had some setbacks, that we've addressed those before in the past, and so we had relationships and trust that have been built up over the course of time, and I think that really helped us through that for the first year. Gary said he had some trouble defining his own legacy. How would you define his legacy at Mizzou? Um, you know, I was asked this question the other day, so I'm going to use the same response. That's because I thought about this. I, I hadn't really thought about that. You know, there was a time, and there's still a time, uh, where Mizzou uh, uses a, a tagline called Mizzou Made. You've seen that, right? You've seen Mizzou Made. Mizzou Made, that tagline of Mizzou Made, came from Gary Pinkle. Gary Pinkle talked about, we need to define what Mizzou made means with regards to our football program. And what, what does that mean? Well, that means that our kids go to class. It means that we play really hard. It means that we are balanced on offense and defense, whatever that may mean. It's a lot, it means that we focus our attention, that we're always going to try to get 80% of our recruits from the state. Uh, we have to get 80% of the top recruits out of the state of Missouri. Whatever that may mean, there's a definition. So then when people looked at Mizzou football and they heard Mizzou made, there was a correlation between what that brand meant. Now, what happened with that, that uh, mantra is not only was that part of the athletic program, that was adopted by the University of Missouri. And to me, I think that's an amazing legacy, that to know that from the foundation and the, 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 the constants in an athletic program, and in particular in football, that an entire institution, right, and our faculty, staff, and our students all adopted the moniker that said, we're Mizzou made. And Mizzou made reflect, reflected who we were as uh, Missourians. And to me, that in itself is an amazing legacy because it, is, it has uh, expanded way beyond winning football games. It's, it's, it's gone throughout the fabric of an institution. I think that's pretty cool. Can you describe what Gary means to you personally? Oh, personally, well, you know, we're, 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 we're good friends and, and we're close. I think we're, we trust each other. We enjoy when we get together for coffee and, and talk about different types of things. And we have very similar interests. Um, and I think from a you know, from a professional and a personal standpoint, to be able to have someone that you can count on, that is, you, you trust, and who's also trustworthy, and that you have a lot of mutual respect and just have fun being around. Um, I'm trying to define what he means to me. He means a lot, of, a lot to me, right? He's a very special person in my life. And the life of my family, my wife Rocky and her son Jake and, and a lot of people. Mike, you mentioned that there's a long list of people he hopes to invite to Atlanta. Do you need to be, you need to be on that list, right? Now, we, now we, are we going to be in Atlanta? I'm going to answer your question. Is, it, is, the, is the, where, When is the hall? They don't know where the Hall well, of Fame the uh, banquet is going to be. Las Vegas. Well, it was in Las Vegas have, this year. Oh, oh, the Hall of Fame itself is in Atlanta. That's right, correct. right. So but on the, on the, the banquet, Ryan, it's it's December, usually. It's TBD on December 5th. But it's usually in New York, right? Right. It's been in New York. Yeah, and they right. moved it. Vegas, they moved it to Vegas because right. they were working on the Waldorf Astoria. So wow. that's a long thing to say, yes, our intention is, is my wife and I, my, my, my wife Rocky and I, who obviously know Gary and Missy and the kids and everybody very well, that we will be there wherever we will be. We're looking forward to it, being well, part of that. A couple times that other schools wanted to talk to Gary. Yeah. How much conviction did you have that 
that wasn't going to happen, that you were going to do everything you could to keep them. I mean, at, at the time, you probably didn't talk about it much publicly, but you know, it's funny. A few times. It, it's funny. You want to be able to say, "Oh man, I wasn't worried at all." You know, we're on top of that shoot. Come on, Dave. I mean, you know, we're sweating bullets because we're sitting there going, "Holy cow!" University of Michigan, pretty, pretty stout reputation and tradition, and. And the University of Washington, there was this draw because Gary was, you know, from there, and he'd done so many amazing things. Um, so I think that the, the 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 thing that gave us confidence was there was always constant communication, always discussions. What do you, and and it was they were candid. You know, what would attract you about this? What doesn't attract you about that? Whatever that may be. And I think that honesty and that transparency in those discussions, um, I would like to think that they were very helpful. Uh, but to tell you that we, I was going to sleep each night, sleeping like a baby, that was not the case, right? I, would be, I was laying up awake at night thinking, oh, man, we got to do whatever we can because coach is pretty important to our program. Do, do you think 15 seasons with the program is, is realistic these days? Or, or um, how, how is, does that going to happen again? I don't, I don't know if that does. I, I think, and I'm not trying to – this isn't about me. I'm just – Trying, not trying to pull that in there too. It's similar to like athletic directors, right? So I was here 17 years and Gary was here 15 years. And for us doing that kind of stuff, if you look around the country, there's very few places anywhere in the country that, that will show that. And I think that the connection on both of those positions are, are important, right? Because of the, of the churn. But as far as specifically to a football coach, um, that thing beyond you know, when you start looking at a, a double-digit number of years that they're at a certain place, that, that anymore, that's just not the case, especially in the Power Five conferences. It's just not the case. Mike, looking back, 05 Independence Bowl, right. come back into the transition from Brandon Chase in 06 yeah. to 07. Is yeah. that the most critical window of the Gary Pinkle success? Yeah, I think so. I think that who intercepted that ball and ran it back for us in 2005? Oh, Marcus King. King. What was that? Marcus King. How, remember that? Holy cow, man! We're getting smoked in the first half, and I'm sitting here in the, I'm sitting here in this AD box, and and right next to it is the is the ESPN box, and they're just ripping us. Those guys are like laughing at us in the in the ESPN guys, because we're down 21 nothing or whatever. Marcus Gang re returns that ball, um, and I think that transition piece, what, how it resonated with me personally, was after that game. I remember that because I was usually always in the you know locker room at win or lose, always in the press conferences on the field. And Brad Smith, I'd just seen him. And right after that, Ben, Chase Daniel comes up to me and he pops me on the chest. He goes, Mr. Alden, don't worry, you're going to see a lot more of those coming up when I'm in, when, not with me. It wasn't about, he didn't say about me. He goes, don't worry, Mr. Alden, you're going to see a lot more of those coming around here. And I thought, man, that was pretty cool. You got this guy named Brad Smith, who was a transformational player. And you got this next guy who was the heir apparent, Chase Daniel, popping me on the chest and saying, don't worry about it, Mr. Alden. You know, we got this. This is what it's going to be like. I think that was pretty, pretty cool. And then you saw everything just take off from there.